All right, ladies and gentlemen, Baron here, and I'm going to be showing you how to access the V1 rockets now. This was posted on the War Thunder subreddit, and J Norbs did a video first kind of showing how to do it. That's where I learned it from. But a lot of people, when I showed my TV3 versus V1 video, they asked how to get to it. And I'm going to do some historical testing as well. And if also, if you want to see and hear, um, what the V1s would have sounded like, actually sounded like, because the uh, sound file they have in the game right now is just a placeholder. Um, Fly Daily has an exceptional video out on it. Um, I'll have a link in the video description below, and I'm sure most of you are familiar. If you're not, you got to check out that channel because it's a great video. Um, and it's kind of inspired me to do a little bit of a test. So you go into Create a Custom Battle and you go into Weapons Test under Current Events. And here you can see the English countryside and where it has red attacking this blue airport so we will start that our password will be Shikaka Shikaka and uh, we are going to not be doing simulator battles we are going to be doing realistic battles fuel and ammo unloaded respawns all crews mission rotation blah 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 we're gonna have some bots in here um, and we'll do US since I am in the United States. So we'll start that up. Now you're going to want to change your team to the allied side, which is represented by this here blue star. Now, a quick little introduction on the planes I'm using. I have the Tempest Mark II, the Mosquito, the first meteor, and then the most advanced meteor. Now I'm going to ready up and start this weapons test. But the reason being why I chose these planes are... The Tempests were the most successful British plane in World War II used to shoot down and stop the V-1 rockets from hitting, you know, their targets. They had a, an estimated 638 claimed V-1 rockets shot down. So we're going to start with that one first. We're going to do air point, and we're going to do low. We're going to do no secondary weapons. We're going to have omnipurpose 20 mils. So an estimated 638 makes the Tempest the most successful. Now you can see these V1s already coming in. Um, and in this battle, they basically, uh, like real his, uh, V1s, they stop their pulse jet engine and then glide into the airfield's kind of the target right there. But the Tempest shot down 638 estimated. The De Havilland Mosquito shot an estimated 623 Spitfire Mark 14, about 303. Mustangs, 232. And then this Meteor, which was actually rushed from its development to take down V1s, um, only shot down 13. So we're going to be going after this first one here. A miss. These things are fast. So we're going to be kind of coming at them head on. May not be the best, but. Baron's a noob right here. Kind of goes to show you how difficult they would be and how terrible I was <laughs> at that. That was just kind of impressive. So yeah, the meteors, and check out these little biplanes shooting in. Um, there will be another wave, so if you do as poorly as I did. But people were asking, can you fly the V-1 rockets? No, you cannot fly them. You can only fly against them as far as I know. So you can kind of see them dropping in right there. What you can't see is their pulse jets um, basically stopping. So we'll jump out of the Tempest. We're going to jump into a meteor and we're going to spawn in the air. There will be some more waves and you can see four here right here. We might see them. Where's the airfield? So, a few last collisions right there. Um, so they're going to be spawning in again. Those look like the AI fighters. And here I have the Meteor F3, the first British Meteor that we have in the um, tech tree right here. And some more V1s. Now what I do want to do is test something out, and that's wing tapping. So we have a lot of speed built up. I probably should have done historical, but I mean, I guess if you're going to test if you can wing tap, you might as well do it in realistic. So the average speed of a V1 
was about 350 miles per hour or 560 kilometers per hour and they flew at about between 3,000 to 4,000 feet or about 910 to 1,200 meters. So we're going to get up next to these guys, um, get a feel for their speed and their height and see if it is kind of historically accurate. And then we're going to try to wing tap, which r in truth you don't physically wing tap as much as you get your wing within six inches of the V1's wing. And we're going to try it. This was done with Spitfires and even done, I believe, with the Meteors. So we're going to try to catch up to this guy. I'm going a little too fast. I'm going to gauge his speed. I'm having to slow down a lot. I did not approach this very well. Air brakes extended, air brakes released. So it looks like they may be going about 560 kilometers per hour. I'm about 540 and it's slowly passing me. And we're at 900 meters just under it. All right. Hopefully this thing won't get away from me. I may have slowed down too much. We're gonna shoot this one down. So you can see they kind of take a bit of hit. You don't want to shoot them from too close. May have to test this again. These ones are already in their descent here. Can't wing tap. And they're kind of, uh, the gyros are having them divert. And I'm not sure if they were programmed to do this when they got near the target to make it more difficult. But these ones are actually diverting from their target. Interesting. Through flying in their formation, like, I don't think they would have done this. The gyros would not, and the limited programming available, limited control, really, they wouldn't be able to do this. So I'm not really sure where these guys are going, but it does give us a better opportunity to attempt to wing tap. So you can see here, it's difficult to catch these guys, even in this Meteor F3. But these V1s are just really, really cool. And the fact, this little, I mean, it's an Easter egg, essentially, in this game. Now our wing tap will probably be a a direct one. Good lord. Are we closing the distance? No, we're not. So they're circling around. I don't believe they would have done this. Um, what's interesting, and I said in the TB3 versus V1 video, that try to wing tap here that the V weapons program good lord are these things difficult was more expensive more costly this guy circled around all the way I lost the one I was supposed to kill which is right there he's slowing down because he you can see let's see I'm not sure his pulse jet did not seem to go off yet when does it go off? This group may be botched. As it flew right into the hangar. But we're going to try that again. But the V1, V2, and even the V3 cannon weapons program was more costly than the Manhattan Project by almost, by almost twofold. So let's try it again. Alright, so we're on the tail of some more V1s. And I believe we may have gotten our approach a little better. <laughs> Terrible timing right there on that AI. Oh, good lord. We got just under that. So we're going to be slowing down a bit, waiting for them. We're going to loop out a bit. We only have so much distance. So you can imagine the pressure that these British pilots would have been on to shoot these things down in the limited time they had. And what's interesting, um, there were actually some British aces who shot down a, a large number of these V1s. And look at these guys already in their approach. And those guys are squad leader Joseph Barry, who shot down 59, and wing commander Beaumont, who shot down 31 himself. So while my airfield defense is not very good, and this is also the map we decided to 
Ooh, that one almost looked like it took down another one, but they both dove at the last moment there. So, I mean, if you think about it, we shot them down, but they pretty much detonated near their target. Um, but this was also the map we decided to fly to France to, which is possible. We haven't gotten a true, you know, landing, but we were able to fly to France. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to check the whole wing tapping evidence. And as we get closer, we're going to slow it down even more, and I might get into free camera mode to follow this V1 down. And how? So we lost our wing. Control F5. Oh, good lord. Now we're going to follow this guy here and see if he goes down. Because that would confirm, at least in theory, um, I don't think you can do kind of the effect where you get within six inches and the force going over your wing bumps the V1's wing and forces it to go into a spin. So we'll go at half speed. He looks like he's going down. Well, I guess theoretically it's not perfect, but it is possible to physically, without shooting them, force them to go on a spin. However, at the current stage, and I'm not sure if we're going to get more V1 stuff in the future, but um, I'm pretty sure that you could... I mean, you can, you can hit them, but you can't survive. So you can't do it really historically accurate quite yet. So I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Is it, is it proven that you can wing tap? Wing tap and it would just be a little one. My approach was terrible. I've heard that you can't. I wanted to test it. I didn't really get that close. But we'll go over the V1 pulse jet. Um, near target, they actually the effect and you can hear the sound if you want to hear what they really sounded like check out fly daily's video as i said before but they kind of do drop down they stop their pulse jet and then they kind of glide and use their momentum to hit the target which this is the uh, the airfield for this battle so it's pretty cool overall i want to investigate this I need to really improve on my jet skills and probably try this in arcade as opposed to realistic battles. But you never know. Might test it out again. So you can wing tap with sacrificing yourself for the Empire. But you can't do it, at least I haven't been able to do it, and survive. So let's check out the explosion! Now there was a lot of creative methods employed to shoot these down. And once I found out about this from watching J Norb's video that there were V1 bombs in this game, um, a few of us got together and decided a creative way to shoot down these V1 buzz bombs, and that was using Russian TB3s. So I guess the scenario is, what if V1 buzz bombs had gone after Russia, <laughs> and Russia employed TB3 bombers to shoot them down?